Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We'd like to welcome everyone to our hour of worship this morning, either in person or at home. Uh, we do welcome you. Anyone who wanted to white Christmas, it's only a few days late, but uh, you got your wish. So. Uh, the only announce, uh, Pastor Tina will be away this week. Uh, any emergencies, uh, call the dentist, and she will contact uh, Reverend Kenneth Broadway. So, any emergencies come up, uh, phone numbers on the bulletin there. Any, I don't see any announcements for this week. Uh, next Monday, uh, a new session for Bible study will start. And uh, that Tuesday, Administrative Council, SBRC meeting, Wednesday. So nothing this week. Uh, anyone else have any announcements? Diane? This week, with the pending weather for this current weekend, we did send out an email putting together an emergency contact list so we can keep everybody informed. If you didn't get the email, see me and we'll make sure that we have your email right. If you didn't have time to respond, please do so so that we can make sure we know how best to reach you because we never want anyone to be on the roads unnecessarily if we do ever need to cancel. And we can use that for events in the future as well, such as the movie coming up on January 27th at 2 p.m. that day. So pending weather, we need to be able to know how to reach out to people. Thank Thank you. Anyone else? Karen let me know that our second box of cookies made it this week. Early a month later. Everybody got their cookies now? They got their cookies. All right. That's good. That's good. Okay, let's uh, continue our service. Let's uh, please rise and uh, for the call of worship. O oh God, our covenant friend, you have been gracious to us through all the years of our lives. We thank you for your loving care, which has filled our days and brought us to this time and place. We praise your holy name, O oh God. You have given us life and reason and set us in a world filled with your glory. You have comforted us with family and friends and ministered to us through the hands of our sisters and brothers. We praise your holy name, O God. You have filled our hearts with a hunger for you and have given us your peace. You have redeemed us and given us a high calling in Christ Jesus. You have given us a place in the fellowship of your spirit witness of your church. We praise your holy name, O God. You have been our light in darkness and a rock of strength in adversity and temptation. You have been the very spirit of joy in our joys and the all-sufficient reward in all our labors. We We praise your holy name, O God. You remembered us when we forgot you. 
He followed us even when we tried to flee from you. He met us with forgiveness when we returned to you. For all your patience and overflowing grace. We praise your holy name, O God. Let's continue with their invitation to God. Uh, come Christians, join the same.
for darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the people. But the Lord will rise upon you and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried in their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because of the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephraim, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. New Testament lesson is taken from Matthew 2, verses 1 to 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star in the east, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me the word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star they had seen in the east, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary and his mother, and they knelt down and paid homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. This morning I have a little bit of a cold, so I'm going to keep my distance, and I will apologize ahead of time for not shaking your hands on the way out this morning. Will you please bow your heads for a word of prayer? Lord God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. Amen. So today's church calendar is quite full. First of all, we remember, of course, the wise men and their gifts as we celebrate Epiphany. Second, we recognize the baptism of our Lord as we contemplate our own baptisms and what that means for a life of faith. We will also take time today to celebrate the installation of our new church leaders for 2024. These people have taken seriously the concept of the ministry of all believers, and they will commit themselves to countless hours of work and dedication over the next 12 months. Another practice we often do on the first Sunday of the new year is we make goals, resolutions, and we take time to recommit ourselves to a life of faith. Some of you have made it your goal to read through the entire Bible this year using the Daily Walk Bible. And I pray that this practice is going well so far, and that you will continue throughout the year, and that it will bless you in many ways. 
Many churches today will share the liturgy that we are about to use. It's called the Wesley Covenant Service, and it has a rich history of use dating back well over 250 years. In 1663, Richard Aline, a Puritan, published a work entitled A Vindication of Godliness in the Greater Strictness and Spirituality of It. Then in 1753, it was again published in John Wesley's A Christian Library. Now Wesley used one specific chapter out of this work called The Application of the Whole, and he used it on Monday, August 11th, 1755, in what was probably the first real celebration of the covenant service in the Methodist movement. Wesley himself found the service rich and meaningful and expressed this in his journal, quote, Many mourned before God, and many were comforted. It was, as usual, a time of remarkable blessing. It was an occasion for a variety of spiritual experiences. I do not know that we ever had a greater blessing. Afterwards, many desired to return thanks, either for a sense of pardon for full salvation or for a fresh, fresh manifestation of his graces, healing all their backslidings." End quote. In London, these services were usually held on New Year's Day, but around the whole country, the covenant service was conducted whenever John Wesley visited the Methodist societies. In 1762, Charles Wesley wrote a hymn to be used specifically for this covenant service. It's number 606, Come Let Us Use the Grace Divine. We're not going to sing that today instead I've chosen some epiphany hymns instead. After the time of Wesley, several versions of the covenant service were developed, gradually giving Wesley's material less place in the total service. And if you were to look at the covenant prayer in our current hymnal, it's found on page 607. And you'll see a much shorter version of the prayer. Perhaps you've used this in prior services. Now this prayer, while not the full prayer written by John Wesley, it's an abridged version which gets to the heart of Wesley's message. This shorter covenant prayer captures the humble submission and the faithful obedience that Wesley was trying to impress upon his hearers. If you'd like to follow along, it's on page 607. Listen as I read the words to the short covenant prayer. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt, rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee, or laid aside by thee. Exalted for thee, or brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am thine. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. I challenge you to pray this covenant prayer either the longer version, which is on today's bulletin insert, or the short, shorter one found in the hymnal. And my challenge is this. Pray this prayer every day for 30 days and see if it doesn't make you think differently about life and faith. It's a rather profound prayer. And we have this bulletin insert so that you can take this home if you'd like the longer version hang it on your refrigerator or some other prominent place so that you can refer back to it anytime you want. Especially when you feel like your faith is small. That's the time to go back to this prayer. This covenant requires us to commit ourselves fully to God. And we should take this seriously. The commitments we're about to make are not just for one day. They need to continue through study, prayer, and the practice of the spiritual disciplines. Here are the words of preparation from Wesley's 1780 service. Brothers and sisters in Christ, 
The Christian life is redeemed from sin and consecrated to God. Through baptism, we have entered this life and have been admitted into the new covenant of which Jesus is the mediator. He sealed it with his own blood that it might last forever. On the one side, God promises to give us new life in Christ, the source and perfecter of our faith. On the other side, we are pledged to live no more for ourselves, but only for Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us. From time to time, we renew our covenant with God, especially when we reaffirm the baptismal covenant and gather at the Lord's table. Today we meet as the generations before us have met to renew the covenant that binds us to God. Let us make this covenant of God our own. Amen. We'll continue with the rest of the covenant service after we do a couple of other things. So we are going to stand and sing our hymn of response before we continue. Please stand.
like to invite anybody who wants to, if you part of this uh, covenant service, there is a part where it says, I bow before you, God. And so if you would like to come to the altar rail to say this prayer, you're welcome to kneel at the altar rail. If not, feel free to sit in the space where you are and just put your, your soul in, a, in an attitude of humble kneeling, even if you're not literally kneeling. And if you're at home, I invite you to kneel as well during this service. Otherwise, you may be seated at this time. Hear now the invitation. Commit yourselves to Christ as his servants. Give yourselves to him that you may belong to him. Christ has many services to be done. Some are more easy and honorable. Others are more difficult and disgraceful. Some are suitable to our inclinations and interests. Others are contrary to both. In some we may please Christ and please ourselves, but then there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. It is necessary, therefore, that we consider what it means to be a servant of Christ. Let us therefore go to Christ and pray the words on the screen. Let me be your servant under your command. I will no longer be my own. I will give up myself to your will in all things. Be satisfied that Christ shall give you your place and work. Lord, make me what you will. I put myself fully into your hands. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and with a willing heart give it all to your pleasure and disposal. Christ will be the Savior of none but his servants. He is the source of all salvation to those who obey. Christ will have no servants except by consent. Christ will not accept anything except full consent to all that he requires. Christ will be all in all, or he will be nothing. Confirm this by a holy covenant. To make this covenant a reality in your life, Listen to these admonitions. First, set apart some time, more than once, to be spent alone before the Lord. In seeking earnestly God's special assistance and gracious acceptance of you. In carefully thinking through all the conditions of the covenant, in searching your hearts, whether you have already freely given your life to Christ, consider what your sins are. Consider the laws of Christ, how holy, strict, and spiritual they are, and whether you, after having carefully considered them, are willing to choose them all. Be sure that you are clear in these matters. See that you do not lie to God. Second, be serious and in a spirit of holy awe and reverence. Third, Claim God's covenant. Rely upon God's promise of giving grace and strength so you can keep your promise. Trust not in your own strength and power. Fourth, resolve to be faithful. You have given to the Lord your hearts. You have opened your mouths to the Lord. And you have dedicated yourself to God. With God's power. Never go back. And last, be then prepared to renew your covenant with the Lord. Fall down on your knees, lift your hands toward heaven, open your hearts to the Lord as we pray the prayer on the screen. O oh, righteous God, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, see me as I fall down before you. Forgive my faithfulness not having done your will. For you have promised mercy to me if I turn to you with my whole heart. 
God requires that you shall put away all your idols. I hear from the bottom of my heart, renounce them all. Covenanting with you that no known sin shall be allowed in my life. Against your will, I have turned my love towards the world. In your power, I will watch all temptations that will lead me away from you. For my unrighteousness is riddled with sin, unable to stand before you. Through Christ, God has offered to be your God again, if you would let him. Before all heaven and earth, I here acknowledge you as my Lord and God. I thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for my portion, and vow to give up myself, body and soul, as your servant, to serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of my life. God has given the Lord Jesus Christ as the only way and means of coming to God. Jesus, I do hear on bended knees, accept Christ as the only new and living way, and sincerely join myself in a covenant with him. O oh, blessed Jesus, I come to you hungry, sinful, miserable, blind, and naked, unworthy even to wash the feet of your servants. I do here with all my power, accept you as my Lord and head. I renounce my unworthiness and vow that you are the Lord, my righteousness. I renounce my own wisdom and take you for my only God. I renounce my own will and take your will as my law. Christ has told you that you must suffer with him. I do here covenant with you, O Christ, to take my lot with you as it may fall. Through your grace I promise that neither life nor death shall part me from you. God has given holy laws as the rule of your life. I do here willingly put my neck under your yoke to carry your burden. All your laws are holy, just, and good. I therefore take them as the rule for my words, thoughts, and actions, promising that I will strive to order my whole life according to your direction and not allow myself to neglect anything I know to be my duty. The Almighty God searches and knows your heart. Oh God, you know that I make this covenant with you today without trial or reservation. If any falsehood should be in it, guide me and help me to set it right. And now glory be to you O God, Father, who I from this day forward shall look upon as my God and Father. Glory be to you, O God the Son, who have loved me and washed me from my sins in your own blood, and now is my Savior and Redeemer. Glory be to you, O God the Holy Spirit, who by your almighty power have turned my heart from sin to God. O mighty God, the Lord omnipotent, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you have now become my covenant friend, and I, through your infinite grace, have become your covenant servant. So be it, and let the covenant I have made on earth be ratified in heaven. Amen. At this time, you may return to your seats. And we're going to take a moment to recognize the new leaders for 2024. And I would like to ask, we have a lot of people serving in leadership in many different roles. We have here 
the traditional committee structure, so we have an administrative board, we have an SPRC, we have trustees, we have um, financial secretaries, we have auditors. If you are serving in any of those capacities, ushers, acolytes, any of those things that help the church to, do, to be the church and to, to do the work of the church, I would ask that you would please stand as we go through this liturgy that is found in the United Methodist Book of Worship for the installation of new, new leaders. And for those of you who are not standing, take a look around and see just how many people it takes to run a church. So let's begin with the invitation. Dear friends, you have been called by God and chosen by the people of God for leadership in the church. This ministry is a blessing and a serious responsibility. It recognizes your special gifts and calls you to work among us and for us. In love, we thank you for accepting your obligation and challenge you to offer your best to the Lord, to this people, and to our ministry in the world. Live a life in Christ and make him known in your witness and your work. Today we install all the new church leaders for 2024. And I ask that you would repeat um, the words on the screen that are in bold face. Here are the questions. Do you this day acknowledge yourself a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ? I do. Will you devote yourself to the service of God in the world? I will. Will you so live that you enable this church to be a people of love and peace? I will. Will you do all in your power to be responsible to the task for which you have been chosen? I will. Let us pray. Almighty God, pour out your blessings upon these, your servants, who have given particular ministries in your church. Grant them grace to give themselves wholeheartedly in your service. Keep before them the example of our Lord, who did not think first of himself, but gave himself for us all. Let them share his ministry and consecration, that they may enter into his joy. Guide them in their work. Reward their faithfulness with the knowledge that through them your purposes are accomplished. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, dear friends, rejoice that God provides laborers for the vineyards. And I ask the congregation, Will you do all you can to assist and encourage these servants in the responsibilities to which they have been called, giving them your cooperation, your counsel, and your prayers? We will. Let us take a moment now to thank the people who have volunteered to serve in 2020. shorter list, list this week. We, we did, did, did some cleaning. I don't know. I hate to say cleaning up of the list. That's a terrible way to say it. I'm sorry. If we haven't heard from you in a couple of weeks, we took the names off. If you would like to be put back on the list or know somebody who should be put back on the list, please let us know. We don't ever want to stop praying for someone who still needs our prayers. But sometimes when there's just too many names we, we and we don't have any updates, it just sort of has, becomes white noise, doesn't it? So we have some names here for prayers this week, and uh, are there any additions that you would like to lift up this morning? Just an update on Guy. He went back to the Chambersburg Hospital and is um, has has quite a few issues. They're hoping he can get to a, a rehab either in the hospital or outside of the hospital. He's barely strong enough to do rehab, so prayers are needed. Mother is slowly improving. We have a meeting on Tuesday with her care team. Um, big question is whether she will be able to be by herself while we go to work. That's the big question. Anyone else? I 
do have one praise this morning. Today is my husband's birthday, so we'll wish him a happy birthday. I'm not sure if he's watching online. He was home in, our, in Mechanicsburg to help the boys dig out from the snow. Um, so he's not here today, but that is one praise. Well, let us go to God in prayer. Lord God, we thank you for your many blessings, the ones we see and the ones we don't see. And Lord, we pray that you would bring healing and strength to all on our prayer list. These are people we love with our whole hearts, and we care so much about every need they have. And we know, Lord, that you care more than we do. And so we pray, Lord, that you would provide whatever they need, that you would lift them up, strengthen them, guide them, and heal them. In Jesus' name, amen. We will now continue our worship as we share in our tithes and offerings. Will the ushers please come forward? Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself 
our life and our salvation. You sent a star to guide wise men to where the Christ was born. And in your signs and witnesses, in every age and through all the world, you have led your people from far places to this light. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses.
Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.